Having a narcissistic boss is a nightmare scenario for any hardworking employee. It's not that uncommon, however, because narcissists seem to exude confidence, something that can often get them promoted. Additionally, because their image is so important to them, they often work hard to get promoted to leadership positions. They are not good bosses, however, and if you're stuck with a narcissistic boss, you'll want to know what can you do about it. Let's explore your options and how to go about exposing them in seven steps without looking like the office tattletale. Document everything. It is absolutely critical that you document everything that happens with your narcissistic boss. You should keep a running log of interactions they have with you or other employees. It's important to note the date, the situation, anyone who was present, and of course, what exactly happened. When you're bringing any kind of complaint against someone in the workplace, it's important to have contemporaneous notes that document what happened. You'll want to describe in detail the context, what was said or done, and how it made you feel. This type of documentation can be done electronically or in a written format, Either way is acceptable, but it's critical to detail as much as you remember about what happened. You also want to include details about whether or not your boss forced you to do something you didn't want to do, if they threatened you in any way, and if they devalued you privately or publicly. All of these are important parts of filing a human resources complaint against your boss. Remember, they have authority in your company. And because of that, you will want to make sure you have as much evidence as possible if you have to go up against them. Get written instructions. Getting instructions for tasks from your narcissistic boss in writing is paramount if you need to report them to your human resources department or their superior. If you are given oral instructions, you can get written confirmation by sending your boss an email asking for clarification. You can say something like, You instructed me to work on the new project, but I wanted to get your guidance on specifically how you want me to handle that. I appreciate all the help you can give me. You're playing to your narcissistic boss's ego, and when they respond, you'll have written confirmation of exactly what they expect you to do. As life coach Bronwyn notes, asking for advice is an incredible way of flagging a problem without triggering skepticism in the other person. Make sure to keep those emails for future reference. If there's any question about what you were instructed to do by your boss, you'll have the evidence. It will be important for proving your credibility. If for any reason you are not able to get an email with instructions, you can ask a colleague to go with you to get clarification on the instructions. They can act as a witness to what your boss might have told you. It's necessary to do this because a narcissistic boss will not hesitate to throw you under the bus if something goes wrong. They won't take responsibility for their role in any mistakes. And to protect yourself, you need to have proof of what you were asked to do. Have witnesses to interactions. Whenever you have to talk to your narcissistic boss, it will be helpful to have witnesses to those interactions. Narcissists frequently erupt in rage, say one thing and then change their mind, and of course, they will blame you for any problems. This is when they might show their true colors, and it's good to have someone who can attest to how you were treated. While a boss has a right to call out your mistakes, they don't have a right to do so in an abusive manner. Narcissistic bosses will often rage at their employees and turn the workplace into a hostile environment. Anytime you have witnesses to that kind of behavior, it helps build your case when you go to expose your narcissistic boss. Witnesses can back up the mistreatment that your boss heaps on the employees. If your boss is treating you that way, they are likely treating other employees that way too. 
It's important to have as many people who can attest to their bad behavior as it bolsters your case. It's important to remember that businesses are mainly concerned with their bottom line, and if your narcissistic boss is helping boost their bottom line, they will be reticent to get rid of them without sufficient evidence. Witnesses are important in that regard. Record meetings. If possible, you'll want to record any meetings you have with your boss. You can state that it helps you remember details of what was said so that you can better do your job. If your narcissistic boss allows this, it will provide you with evidence of any instructions you received and also the tone of the interactions between your boss and their employees. If your boss won't allow a recording, you should make sure to take detailed notes and, if possible, get your boss to sign on them as accurately as possible. Many companies have someone take meeting notes and the recorder then sends them out for correction and validation. You could offer to do this for your meetings as a way of ensuring more accuracy and improving employee understanding and performance. These notes then become valuable pieces of evidence should anyone question why you or other employees did something the way they did. They are evidence of the instructions you were given, and they are also evidence of any suggestions or good ideas you might have had at one of those meetings. That can come in handy when you go to make your case with your superiors or your human resources department. Get legal advice. This is an important consideration. Before you jeopardize your career or a job that you need, you might want to consult a lawyer who specializes in this kind of law. You do have legal rights, and they can advise you about the best way to go about filing a complaint. They might also be able to accompany you when you make your case. That can show your company just how much of a problem your narcissistic boss has become. One employee making claims may not cause them to act to protect your rights, but one employee with evidence and legal representation is likely to make them take notice. Your lawyer can also advise you about the quality of any evidence and documentation you've gathered. They can let you know if it is likely to be enough to get the company to act. They might also be able to help you get more. Depending on the nature of your narcissistic boss's bad behavior, a lawyer could ask for testimony under oath as happens with a deposition. That can prompt other witnesses to be more truthful, and once again, it underscores the seriousness of your claims. It's easy for a company to brush aside or even cover up the bad actions of one individual, particularly if that individual happens to be good at their job or seemingly gets results. When you have legal representation, however, most companies will take notice and play by the book. They can't afford to have a cover-up exposed or have a scandal affect their profit margin. Present your case. Once you have assembled your evidence, organized in a logical manner, taken note of any potential witnesses, and consulted a lawyer, it's time to present your case to either your human resources department or the appropriate superiors. When you present your case, you don't want to do so in an aggressive or vindictive manner. You want to stay calm and simply state the types of behaviors that have created a hostile workplace for you in a straightforward manner. Don't become emotional, as it makes you seem less credible. Simply detail your experiences and how your narcissistic boss's behavior has affected you. Don't cry don't get angry, and don't exaggerate the facts. You don't want to seem like you're out to get your boss. You want to seem like a reasonable person who is being treated unfairly. State the facts and offer your evidence. Be sure to make copies of that evidence for your records too, and let your superiors know that you have done that. Ask them for a timeline of what happens next and it's also okay to ask to be reassigned until your case is resolved. 
It's not legal for them to punish you for making a complaint like this, and having to continue working with a narcissistic boss can be construed as a punishment. Stay professional. This is a really important point. No matter how your case is decided, it's vital that you stay professional at all times. If you win and your narcissistic boss is fired or demoted, something that only happens in approximately 5% of the cases, you shouldn't gloat or even appear to be overly happy. If your case is decided against you, you'll need to stay professional to help with what comes next. You might need to be reassigned to another department permanently, or you might need to consider finding another job. Whatever the case, you don't want to act unprofessionally, as that will just cause more problems for you. Keep your cool, stay professional, and thoughtfully consider what comes next. If you find your company is retaliating against you or the workplace has become even more hostile, this might be the time to consult your lawyer about any other options you have. Sometimes companies deny or cover up this kind of bad behavior, but a lawyer can get a more fair resolution in court. That might be an option to you if you're dissatisfied with the outcome or you feel your company is trying to ruin your career. Finally, a narcissistic boss is just about the worst kind of boss you can have. They will take your ideas, blame you for mistakes, and they may frequently erupt in a rage. It can be difficult to get anything done about them, given that they can be charming when they want to be, and they can be good at their job. They will also use your emotions against you to make you look like the unhinged, disgruntled employee. You may not be able to get your narcissistic boss fired, but you can keep them from using your emotional triggers to make you appear emotionally unhinged. My 5-Step Roadmap to Heal Emotional Triggers can help you recognize your own emotional wounds that cause you to react emotionally when triggered. Th this free guide can help you diffuse those triggers to prevent a narcissist or anyone else from using them against you. Just click on the link below this video and I will promptly send you a copy directly to your inbox. It will help you take control of your own emotions and stop narcissistic abuse in its tracks. Thanks for watching.